Hello, everybody. Hello. So this is a session on doing civic mapping projects. And Stephen and I got together to do this jointly. And we have a little presentation that we're going to give to orient us um, about what this is about. And then we're going to move to a table in the lounge and go through what we're talking about and actively do these things and link all of these great open street map tools together for this. So I am Diane Fritz and I am a very new um, board member for OpenStreetMap US and loving being part of this conference and having the opportunity to do a workshop with Stephen. And I am Stephen Johnson. I'm an organizer for Teach OSM. I'm a longtime uh, OpenStreetMap contributor and um, Oh, I've probably know a lot of you, uh, you know, over the years have met a lot of folks at state of the map conferences and things like that. So anyway, excited to be here. And I think we have a pretty good, uh, I think we have a really relevant topic here. So excited for everybody to be here and participate. You want to roll the slides and is there anything else we need to say before we jump into this or? I don't think so because we want to get to the workshop part. I think so. so too. Yeah. Let's let's go. Yeah, let's do that. The in, we want to make this as kind of as hands on as we as we can in here, but we have some soft stuff to introduce first here. Um, first of all, um, this is about um, civic engagement in um, OpenStreetMap. I did have a brief presentation yesterday where I mentioned. Um, open mapping as civic engagement, as kind of a, a, an act of citizenship. And, and we very much want to demonstrate how um, OpenStreetMap figures in creating a civic identity, to creating um, kind of outlets for um, community expression, civic expression for the benefit of the community. So we're talking about tying a bunch of tools together here. And the, the idea here is to introduce a workflow that you can use in a civic environment. Let's move to the next slide, please. So accordingly, our objectives here are to um, spend a little bit of time here on planning, which I think is the soft part of it. And um, the rest of it, um, we'll outline a mapping plan and um, extract data for public use and posting it to a map so it can be made available for, um, for persuasion, for decision makers, for other people to use. So let's start right off with planning a community project. Go ahead to the next slide, please. First of all, um, I'm a firm believer in defining terms uh, before we started so that we all have kind of a common understanding of this. It's interesting if you, um, if you sit down at a search engine and you um, type in community mapping, you'll get lots of different responses and a lot of really interesting responses and uh, half of them have nothing to do with uh, actual cartography or mapping. So um, it's important, I think, to have these terms up there. And these are just loose terms and just things that I came up with. And so there's certainly, um, we can certainly refine these and they're certainly open to um, interpretation, but a community is a group of people with a shared sense of identity or, or values or place or, or interests and um, mapping, um, it's funny mapping, we have to explain this sometimes, but we think of it, and I think we all have a shared understanding of that as the act of adding, editing and maintaining those features on OpenStreetMap. So, so hence community mapping is sort of a, uh, a citizen driven, uh, it's a citizen science project uh, where you're um, using OpenStreetMap to convey these sorts of things. So let's go to the next slide. Um, I want to bring up three examples of civic mapping because I think it um, is easier to kind of point to some examples than it is to kind of um, exhaust a definition. So if you can advance the next slide, we'll bring up the first one. Um, this is a, a, a topic that's kind of um, been on my mind recently because it's a great way to um, improve the map and as well as um, get involved with civic activities. But Code for Charlottesville has had this um, project up for the past few months about um, 
adding sidewalks. And uh, the goal of this is to improve routing for mobility, specifically for people who are in wheelchairs or um, have mobility issues, but also just for people who, you know, the very old and the, and the very young who are typically without automobiles, this is a great way for them to get around. Let's move to the next slide. Second example, you know, um, many of you are familiar with um, the Map Kybera uh, program, which I guess Mikkel and his wife Erica started about uh, 10, 11 years ago, something like this. Essentially, it was an area, a slum area in, in Nairobi, Kenya, that was not on the map because as an informal settlement, the people didn't have title to the land. And since they didn't have title to the land, they were invisible and weren't kind of recorded on this. So uh, OpenStreetMap turned into be a beautiful, um, and this is kind of like the reference standard project here for civic mapping because now um, this entire community, this entire slum that was just a blank spot on the map is now uh, got all sorts of um, you know, businesses and schools and enterprises, water and sewers and things, you know, things that were never there are now uh, on the map. Again, let's go to the next slide here. Um, there's another more local example from last year's um, fires in Colorado where um, there's a lot of areas north of Denver um, that were not, uh, that were insufficiently mapped, I guess, with um, with houses. And uh, this is kind of in the the rural, uh, the fire zone where, you know, rural areas and the wild, uh, what's it called? The wild um, suburban the wildland wooey. interface. Yeah. So um, this was an effort to kind of find houses, driveways, and uh, roads and connect them to improve um, coordination for, for mapping. So let's uh, summarize here a little bit here. Um, the point of all three of these projects here is you need to have a rationale for, you know, a pretty strong rationale that connects, you know, what you're mapping with uh, the purpose that will be used. And um, uh, this is harder, I think, sometimes than we, um, than we are, like to admit. Um, as mappers, I've always, I, I've done a lot of work um, training teachers and um, I've trained them how to map and um, but what they don't really understand is how to apply the open mapping to a specific problem so if you're if you're partnering with like a civic group you need to kind of demonstrate how this mapping is going to improve the final you know results what are we going to gain from this map and making a rational nexus between doing some mapping activity and connecting it with some way of actually improving conditions on the ground so you know how do you highlight on that map i've got several questions that are posed in there um, you know, who's going to see it and what do you want them to see? And so a lot of it is very selective cartography to show them what, you know, to draw attention to what, and we'll get into that later on in the UMAP section of it. But consider some of those compelling reasons to identify community assets or, you know, public safety, um, you know, for like crosswalks and stop signs and things like that, as well as just for giving local, giving visibility to landmarks that aren't going to make it onto official maps. And they, those could be um, street trees or, um, I don't know, community gardens or um, just all sorts of assets that are just kind of too small or too insignificant to make it onto local maps. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so a little bit more specifically here, um, once you've kind of decided that lofty purpose that's going to motivate your mapping, you need to kind of think about the mapping scope. How are you going to execute this? So this is the way you start to get a little bit more tactical. Um, are you going to map in the field or are you going to conduct armchair mapping using imagery? So the key issue here is how are you going to ground truth what's there? How are you going to you know, specify and know that the data there are good? Um, take advantage of, you know, looking at existing mapping. Are all the benches there? Are all the hydrants there? Or um, are all the buildings there? Are they just missing um, addresses? Or are they just missing, you know, the businesses on the street fronts? Things like this. Um, oftentimes, as you well know, um, when we are working with uh, citizen science, when we're working in the community, we're uh, working with new mappers more often than not. And so there's some training component up front with this. So there's, you know, there's not just the mapping that needs to be done, but there's also kind of a training up front that needs, if you want to engage new mappers in this. Defining the scope of the boundaries, you know, how, how big is this going to be? Are you going to collaborate with people nationwide or is this going to be a community driven where you're, you know, driven by a 
you know, a certain neighborhood or a few census tracts or things like that. And lastly, are you, uh, you know, looking at features or are you trying to capture everything in a specific neighborhood like Map Cabrera? Or are you just looking for park benches and fire hydrants, things like that? So and today we're going to be looking for um, specific features. Let's move to the next slide, please. A couple other considerations here. Um, partnerships. Um, this is a great place to partner with um, civic and outdoor clubs. I don't know, 4-H or scout clubs, um, civic groups that are, you know, connected with um, civic purpose, maybe environmental or social, um, things like that. Consider who your partners are because um, they can kind of be a force multiplier. Plus, it also brings them into the mapping community as well and shows them how OpenStreetMap can be used to, you know, drive other, you know, community engagement across. Um, one other thing we didn't have time to include in the kind of the final presentation here, but um, HOT has a, what they call a campaigner, um, which is a great way to set up um, a field project. Um, you know, if you're working in a specific area and you want to make sure all the area is covered, your team can use this campaigner um, to kind of aid and um, abet their their um, the, the planning and the execution of your of your mapping projects. So that's it for the planning um, planning section. I think we'll move to the next slide, and I think we're on to section two, setting up your project. Diane, I'm going to hand this over to you. Great, thank you. So as Stephen said, they're using like the Hot OSM campaigner. There there are different ways of doing everything that we're going to be talking about today. But we do have a worksheet that we've set up for setting up a project and, and bringing in people that may have never seen OpenStreetMap before. So trying to do a, a complete but very simple workflow where you can engage people in your community. So that's the goal of our worksheet. And I have a link to it in our last slide in this presentation. So I'm just gonna give a quick overview with these next few slides of what we're going to be doing from that worksheet. So setting up your project is, again, the ground truthing that we mentioned, having a reality check in that workflow. And so we're going to take a look at whether you might want to do that in the field or do armchair um, mapping for it. In our little workshop, we're going to look at field papers because that's pertinent to something that we might set up in our workflow. We're, we won't actually do field work, but we'll go into that website and see how that works. But you can also use Mapillary, OpenStreetCam, or um, being street side, these built-in layers that you can use for validating the mapping that you're doing while you're editing. So after trying to make sure you understand what the data looks like, the next thing is just setting up that whole project of what you need to do. And using the tasking manager is key for this, unless of course you're doing an individual project, maybe you don't need to do this. But with citizen science, having a tasking manager is great for conveying what the project is for, organizing that project for all of the people that are volunteering and then kind of just seeing how well it's going and then introducing maybe the volunteers that are in your project to other projects and getting them involved in the community. So posting um, project instructions in the tasking manager is something very important to give a really good rationale for I'm sorry, I'm hearing an, a signal and I'm not sure if that is something I need to look at. Any feedback on that, Stephen? <laughs> uh, you're, it's uh, like beach balling here. It's, I'm not seeing a presentation here for some odd reason. Okay. I don't know if you're seeing it on screen or not. I am, I'm just hearing a sound that is saying something is wrong. Yeah, so, I think it's Airmeet Air is screaming in agony because it cannot display the presentation. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yes, much laughing. Let me try and reshare that screen and yeah, see if I, I can if get just, back to it. Yeah. It was a display alarm. I'm sure that's what it was.
All right. I see it now. Are we back? <laughs> we are. So I had been talking about the tasking manager, I think when the alarm went off. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. And then, so using that, and then the important parts of doing the tasking manager, and we're going to show you how to actually do this today. So if anybody wants to participate in this part, um, email info at teachosm.org to get permissions to do this. And we'll go into that more in the worksheet when we go to the table. But having a good reason or why of the rationale for the project described in the tasking manager is important for people coming to that task. And then really, really good instructions about how to do it so that people are self-sufficient in that space. Um, back in the real world, when we can do these things together and maybe have more momentum for the project, having good logistics for setting up that mapping, whether you get a place in a library to do it together to make it feel more community supported is a really good idea. Make sure all of your hardware and things will work efficiently so that people can dive right into the mapping for that project. So a couple of small tips is start small and then scale up. Don't bite off more that you can choose so that you can help the people in your community that are going to be part of this project. And just learn by attending other events and get some other um, sense of how other people run tasks in the tasking manager. So we'll go into this more, but this is a quick slide of the mapping process overview that shows how the tasking manager relates to using an editor within it. We can use ID or JOSM, other ones, but we're going to use ID in our worksheet workflow today. And this is restated in the worksheet that we're going to share, but it basically just has this Here's the tasking manager, I pick my task, I go into that editor, map all of the features with the instructions in my pink square, and save those up to OpenStreetMap with my change set comments as I'm going. And then when I'm done mapping, whether I've completed my square or not, I indicate that in the tasking manager, and then could click Submit Task to release that task. So after the mapping is done, then with the civic workflow, we have a target audience with this project. And what we're trying to do is create a map easily that we can share with decision makers that are pertinent to this issue. So we wanna be able to extract that data and then show it on a map. So to extract the data, we're going to dive into using Overpass Turbo to do that. Here's the URL for it. And then there are a couple of tips for using Overpass Turbo. There is a whole wiki guide on this. Keeping your area of interest to the area that you're going to look at is important. If you're using Overpass Turbo and you have this wide space and you do a query, it really hits that tool that server. And so trying to keep it small to keep queries reasonable is a really good recommendation. Make a separate query for each feature set that you want to show on your map because you will be symbolizing them based on the data layer that you create. We can use really specific queries with our tag system from OpenStreetMap, limit to just nodes or ways to make sure our data structures are reasonable. And then again, refer to that wiki if we have any more questions. So then the sharing information, the next tool that we're going to be looking in is called UMAP. And we're going to build a web map with that information that we pulled out of Overpass Turbo. And this is a wonderful tool that makes it very simple for people to import data and symbolize it and show it on a web map that they can just share the URL or if there's a more um, structured 
projects going on, then people can actually embed this into another website and share it with stakeholders for whatever the civic issue is. So we're gonna go through this workflow and we have a worksheet at tinyurl.com slash civic mapping. If you want to go to that, there is a PDF there that everyone can download and follow along. And we're gonna go through these tools. We're gonna to use field papers today, just pretend. We will go into tasking manager again. If you want to actively do that part, there is an email to send um, to request permissions at info or info at teachosm.org. And then we'll be diving quickly into ID editor and then spend more time on overpass turbo and UMAP and showing how we can go from soup to nuts on a, I have this question, I need to show some data on a map to talk to people and then create a map that I can share back out and make this a simple process for people that are joining you in this. Our task today that we're going to do um, is going to simply be marking um, benches in a park in case there aren't enough benches for people that are older, maybe have disabilities, trying to get around, might need more benches to walk to a place to watch their kid watch a baseball game. That is the, the kind of little scenario that we have set up. It's very simple, but it's a nice structure for going through this process.